thank you so much for making the time to have a chat with us today. We are really excited. Hey, thank you for having me so much. And I appreciate uh, you guys taking an interest in what I'm doing. Mate, mate obviously, I uh, love the work. Lisa and I have been watching Undercover Billionaire. Mate, I'd love to know how you got involved with it. Yeah, so they called me in January uh, of 2020 before COVID. Oh, my god! And gosh. said, hey, a guy named Angus James called me uh, with TJAT uh, M- Media Productions and said, hey, you're, you're my first choice for this show. I guess he told Elaine that, too. So, uh, <laughs> and, Smart man. <laughs> and, and we want you to do, you know, could you do, could you do a show where you got dropped off? I'd never heard of the show. And they, they and I said, well, tell me about it. And he's like, well, we drop you off in a town you've never been. Uh, typically, it's going to be a town that's beat up financially. And we give you $100 in old truck and 90 days to build a million dollar business. I said, uh, man, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> and, I, and I said, can I see something? He's like, yeah, we have last season. I went and watched it. I called him back. I said, yeah, I'll do the deal. And I said, under one condition, I want to meet the president of Discovery Channel. And uh, so I flew out to L.A., sat down with uh, Nancy Daniels, Nancy underscore Daniels <laughs> at Discovery, Discovery.com. And I sat down and she's like, I said, OK, give me the pitch, Nancy, give me the pitch. And it's a huge table, 25, 30 foot conference table in, in, in Los Angeles. Uh, it's Discovery Channel, big, big offices, a lot of money. And um, she's like, we're going to drop you off in a town. You got $100 in an old truck and your job's to build a million dollar business. I said, look, make it 10 million. They don't, they don't show this on the show. It, th- this is behind the scenes. I said, make it 10 million. That's 10 X. Make it $10 million. I don't need the full 90 days. Okay. Oh my God, do- you're making it so hard for yourself. I, I don't need 90 days. And, and, and I'll bet a million dollars of cash. I reached down, picked up a bag. She's like, are you serious? I reached out. I picked up a bag. There was four bags. I had just stopped at the bank, four Ziploc bags. Each had $250,000 in U.S. dollars. And and I said, and I'll give you a million dollars if I don't hit the number. Also, I'll buy the crew. How many crew do you have? She's like, we'll have 19 to 20 crew on the, on the uh, production. And I said, I'll buy every one of them a new car if I don't hit it. <laughs> I hope you hit it. And her sake. eyes bugged out. Her eyes bugged out. Her eyes got like that big. And she's like, what? Are you, are you, are you playing with me right now? And I said, no, I'm not playing with you. And she's like, you're going to be great TV. <laughs> and, and, and that's how I secured the deal. Uh, they only had a month and a half at that time. They were, they wanted to try to start shooting in March. We started shooting the third week of February. Uh, and, um, at that time, I don't think Elaine and Monique were part of part of the season two. Uh, I got stopped two weeks into it uh, in late February. We started shooting again pre-COVID, and then COVID hit, shut the country down, and they stopped production. So that's when I think they got in communication with Elaine and Monique because I don't think they thought I was going to come back. Oh, okay, yeah. Sir. So actually yeah. at time, well, na- at the time that we're recording this now, I think it's just the episode that I just saw was that you just had to stop and you're cracking yeah. it <laughs> about that. Yeah. Um, but definitely one of my highlights of the show was you standing on the side of the road <laughs> yeah. in the, the silk pajamas with the silk sleep mask on, <laughs> absolutely hustling your little heart out to sell mattresses. And uh, I know that Nick and I actually both followed your content prior to seeing you on the show. So I was really interested. I also read your book as well. And I was really interested to see how you'd go on the show um, because you obviously are a very uh, big personality. And I was actually really, um, I, I really warmed to you. And I was really, Uh. yeah. (laughs) And I thought you were amazing. And I know that Nick and I like really got to see you in that different light because, you know, you see you up on stage and, you know, your loud voice, you're obviously passionate about what you do, but sort of seeing you get back down and and really hustle was amazing. So yeah, you like seeing me be punished. You like the punishment. (laughs) Absolutely. You're a sick person. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Now I know that Nick was really, uh, you know, he was talking about selling the car. Uh, Sell the car, Elaine. Yeah, sell the car. Yeah, and you obviously <laughs> you sold that truck. But if you could go back and do one thing differently on the show, what would it be? Well, look, I, you know, I, the, there, there's parts about the show they they don't cut it the way. Like if I was producing the, sh- the show, I would have produced it or cut it differently. 
I'm an unproducible person. So we had a lot of fights behind the scene about, oh, you need to do this and you need to do that. I said, you need to shut up. That's what y'all need to do. <laughs> y'all need to shut up and get your little camera on your shoulder and just follow me around because I'm the only person here that's ever built a million dollar business or a $10 million business or a $100 million business. And no offense, but you guys are lucky to have your batteries turned on at the proper time. So, <laughs> Why so didn't they capture please, this? <laughs> The, the, the crew, the, like the, the, there was a love-hate relationship with between me and the crew. Um, I can tell they like Elaine and they like Glenn from the year before. They don't like me. I'll tell you right now, they nobody likes me. But you got to remember, I was trying to I was trying to build a ten million dollar business in ninety days. So when you get that kind of when you get that kind of pressure on yourself, like uh, be, be, being the most likable person was not the deal. I also, because I do this for a living and because I'm out there telling people they're 10 X and they can do anything. And this is my brand. So it wasn't just the money on the line. It was the brand. My brand's on the line. Glenn Stearns does not educate people for a living. Elaine doesn't educate people. I've been educating people for 30 years. I've been paid hundreds of millions of dollars by big corporations to show them how to raise their top line. I had a lot more invested in this, in this than just time and money. I had to make it work. <clears throat> so some of the regrets I have is, is really not about what I did, but how it got cu cut. For instance, when, when I got to town, uh, when, they, when we landed in this city, the first thing I did was I said, hey, guys, I want you to record this. The first three things I'm going to do is I'm going to cash my check. I'm going to a gym to work out. Second thing I'm going to do is go work out. The third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to go visit a place that's for sale. Now, literally, those are the three things I said I was going to do. That's exactly what I did. I, I, I went and dropped the check off for $100 at the Wells Fargo. You don't see that till like episode two or three. I dropped the money off because I didn't want to have any money on me. I did not want to be able to have money accessible to me. It forced me to go to zero. So that I was no longer managing money, I had to go create from the first minute I was in town. Second thing I did was I went to a gym. The reason I went to a gym, and they didn't show this, and it's really sad because gyms, gyms are a place where people can go meet people easily. There's no easier place in the world than a gym to meet people other than maybe a church. The problem is churches, most churches are, are not open uh, Tuesday afternoon at three o'clock in the afternoon. So I went to a gym because I can go there and I can help people and be helped without seeming weird. <laughs> it's also, it's also a place where, where people go there to improve themselves. So you can typically meet or find out who owns the businesses in town. Genius. The third place I went to was a company, an RV park, that, uh, RV lot that was for sale. It had actually, it was an old listing and it had been sold. That's why I ended up at Ryan Zabukovic's because it was for sale. I thought I was going to go there and buy the place. I didn't know, like literally that's what I went there for, dude. I went there to buy the place, not with no money, with a hundred dollars. <laughs> I went there to buy the place. I didn't and go there to sweaty, sleep there. Just, sweaty gym shorts as well. Don't forget those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so um, the thing I regret is how it's cut a little bit because because I really did this to prove to people that you don't need money, you don't need time, yeah. and you don't need contacts. You need, but you do need a strategy. The thing is, you went there with obviously everything. So you had, you've got a jet, you've got lots of money, and then you ended up with nothing. And yeah. I, I watched the first three episodes, and at the start you go on gun ho, and then you get sick, and it goes a bit downhill. Like, did you go, oh shit, what have I done? Or did you go, no, no, I can make this happen. Never, never doubted yourself. Dude, I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit every every day, every day for 84 days, like even toward the end. There was six days that I was like, OK, I'm good. The first 84 days of the 90 days was the worst 84 days of my life. I would never do this again. Oh, gosh. Shit. There's no amount of money they could pay me to do it again. Um, there's something that happened to me in this. That. That I forgot we were doing a TV show. Like they must have told me 50 times we're doing a TV show <laughs> in the big scheme of things. This does not matter. And I'm like, it matters to me. Like I could not come. I could not. To me, it was real life. And, and um, 
I became this guy, Lewis Curtis, that didn't have money. He doesn't have fame. He doesn't have a jet. The, the thing that was really, really difficult, that's unexplainable, is I had all this stuff waiting for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could have just left, drove an hour and a half and got on my plane and blown out. Yeah, yeah. I could have been in my condo in Miami with my kids nurturing me. That that was the thing that was the one of my biggest disabilities. It was not the pain, it was the pleasure that 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 waited for me. Yeah. Um, that called me every day to, to and begged me to quit. And and so um but it but dude, it look, it's it really got me connected with what people go through every day. Yeah, I think that was fear. The- yeah, the interesting yeah. thing about the show is that, you know, you look at shows like The Apprentice and, you know, they've got their food and accommodation, everything all sorted. They're just trying to do the challenge or start the business or whatever it is. Whereas this show is almost like, and I don't know if you've got it in the States, we've got a show here called Filthy Rich and Homeless and you get put out on the street and you don't have literally anything, no phone, no money, um, just pretty much the shirt on your back. And I almost felt like this show was The Apprentice meets Filthy Rich and Homeless because... You know, wow. for a lot of people, you're actually really struggling when you start a business. It's not just like you've got stacks of cash to fall back on. Like you, a lot of the time you're starting from nothing. So it was really good to actually see yeah. like a bit more of a realistic take on trying to start a business. Yeah, we don't have that show here, but I, I can tell you like most of these shows, and I think Elaine will tell you the same thing. Maybe she did. Most of these shows are very produced. Mm. And they're highly produced. Okay. In my case, I refuse to let them help me in any way, shape or form. I'm like, you know, they came to me once and said, Hey, we got this company, this business. We want you to meet this guy. I'm like, no, thanks. And they're like, no, no, the the person's perfect for this show. Uh, Thank you. No, thank you. I didn't do it. I didn't create it. It didn't come for me. If I run into this person, don't even mention their name. If I run into them later, great. But uh, if I don't do it, I don't want your help. Thank you. No, thank you. That's not the deal for me. I'll, I can make this go right. And, uh, you know, for me, because I because so many people follow me on social media, that became a detriment. Yeah, it would. It would. Because like like if we if, if me and Adrian do business and then you la- we later find out that, you know, me that 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 inks is that kills that deal. I lost two deals. I lost a $12 million real estate transaction because they found out who I was. And I was, I had a, a, a deal. You're not going to see it in the show. You're going to see a deal blow up on me, but you, they don't really go into the details. It was a $10 million piece of real estate. I had it under contract for, I think, 8.8. Convince them to sell it to me. And the whole thing blows up because they find out it's a TV show and I'm Grant Cardone. And so we couldn't use it. Grant, I'm actually very surprised you did this because this could have backfired because you're, 100%. you're, you're all about building wealth. And if yeah. you didn't hit the $1 million target in 90 days, it kind of basically, no offense, it kind of fucks you. So yeah, 100%. I'm very surprised you did this. And the big question is, you don't have, don't have to answer, but I'm going to ask it. Did you hit the $1 million? <laughs> the $10 million. I can tell you that I can tell you that I did not hit my target. But, but, oh. but I can tell you that I think everybody will be uh, talking about what I did hit for a long time. Oh, interesting. Setting the bar high for the next season. The plot thickens. No, there won't be a next season. I, I would never <laughs> do this again. <laughs> oh, no, but it will be a high bar. It will be a high bar. Jesus, pressure's on. Need to get Nick on season three. Oh, I'd love to do that. Yeah. I, I've actually listened to Grant now. I don't think Dude, I'm well, Nick, one. would you do it? Would you do it? Oh, uh, after listening to you, I'm probably not now. Oh, actually, no, I'd do it. Good challenge. You'd be great. What we need, you know, what they need is they need they need a beautiful Asian girl to do it. (laughs) I don't know any, unfortunately. (laughs) I think you would be perfect. Oh God, I'd be terrible. The thing is, what I would do, I would actually just go to my bedroom, build a website, and start selling digital services online. Yeah, his would be pretty boring. Yeah, literally, (laughs) me in a bedroom, just bloody online, cold calling, saying I can do your marketing for you. Done. But actually, I'm so surprised because you're obviously such a big personality, Grant. And, uh, you know, I think it was really good on you because I, I saw you shaving your head. And uh, can I actually, just really quickly, I l- really um, love that you opened up because you had that scar on your head and you were talking about what happened and how you got attacked and how you fell into drugs. So I know that you probably weren't happy with the the edit, the final edit, but as a viewer, uh, you know, I think I... Re- 
really got to see that different side of you, which I, you know, really liked. And uh, I think I feel a lot more connected to you because of that. Uh, yeah. So, but I guess... A, a guy just has to get beat up to, to, to impress you, huh? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's all about pain. Oh, my God. What a sicko. What a sicko. <laughs> this is quickly going downhill. Uh, so, in terms of just... Uh, I just wanted to understand, what's the number one skill you think you have to be successful in business? So, look, you, you know, it's a contact sport. This whole thing's a contact sport. Like, like you got to make contact. And sometimes it goes badly. And in like the, the, the experience you're talking about, right. I got beat up. I got beat up really bad. Like it's contact, like a boom and, you, you, and it hurts, but, but, but all the business and success, whether it's Elon or Jeff Bezos or Oprah Winfrey, it's a contact sport. Nobody's ever made it by hiding. And sooner or later, you're going to leave, you know, the, 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 the stories of the guy or gal that start a business in their garage Sooner or later, you got to make contact. You're not going to stay in your closet, your office, your bedroom, and and scale a business. It's never been done in the history of the world. Mark Zuckerberg was in his dorm. Everybody's like, "Oh my God, he built Facebook Facebook in his dorm." If he was still in his dorm, we wouldn't know about it. Yeah. He had to leave the dorm and go to Silicon Valley, and he had to, he had to quit just wearing his hoodie and had to actually put some business clothes on and, 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 and kind of vibe into the whole deal so that he could build a billion dollar, uh, multi hundred billion dollar business. So, uh, business, business success entrepreneurs are about making contact. You have to make contact. Keep in mind, I got 13 million people that follow me on social media. I could not use social media Mm. because I have 13 million people there. Like as Lewis Curtis in this show, I think uh, Elaine uses social media. Monique uses social. I couldn't use it at all because if I used it for any period of time, people would be like, I know who that is. Mm. Okay. Like you could put a mask on me. Like in one meeting, in one meeting, the guy in the middle of the meeting, the guy's like, hold on one second. Anybody ever tell you you sound just like Grant Cardone? (laughs) I said, man, I hear that shit all the time. (laughs) I said, do you think Grant Cardone would come to Pueblo, Colorado? He's like, no, not for a second. And then we just moved on. But this guy, this guy had been listening to my, my, uh, you, uh, to our YouTube channel. Oh, you do have a very distinct voice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think that's good. I think that's good. <laughs> it's great. Grant, question for you, a little bit off topic. If anyone started in business, what would you recommend – they do to really kick things off is it just start and is a particular industry you would go into or just kind of go with the flow you know i would tell people that before they go into business if if we could convince the school systems to teach kids how to go cold call in business i mean in school leave the classroom and go knock 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 yeah and do that do that for like 30 days in a row until you start building up fortitude and handling dis- disappointments and rejection and discouragement. Yeah. I did that at I did that at high school. I did door knocking for a while. Yeah, you were selling yeah, it. It, like that, tapes, that, that Fuck, it hard, it, hard, it's the most difficult game in the world. Yeah. Like, cause you get to meet yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, the second thing I would tell people is like, just watch what I do in this show. Like I, I'm not trying to sell anything, nor do I go get a job. You know, when I watch the lane get that job on the farm, I'm like, why is she doing that? They they know, but there's not a million dollars in that farm. Like, like it's just a different thing that we're doing. Right. Elaine went and did that. And, and, and I didn't do that. I never worked for $15 an hour. What I did was went for 15% equity on the upside. Like if you, if you watch the deal that I do with this guy, Matt Smith, I proved to him I could drive his sales I did that, and then I negotiated a 15% of the gross sales of the company. People don't understand how big that is. Like, if I could sell a million dollars worth of stuff for this guy, that means I made 150 grand off of that. Mm. And we did 91,000 the first two days I was there. Wow. The the show shows me doing 14,000, but the truth is that over the next two weeks, we would still continue to make sales from that weekend that did almost a hundred grand. You know, I I know that I was going to end up with a a percentage of Matt's business without putting any money into it. Is that the, is that the mattress business or the gym business? Yeah, that was the mattress business. 
It's a lot and of then I was going to negotiate something on the fitness business too, but I realized there's just no margin there. You know, it's like, there's just no money to be made in the fitness business anymore. So the red hot tip is to get into mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, hey, there's a lot of money in sleep. Everybody needs one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah. You know, Especially there's, half there's typically, life. there's typically three or four mattresses in every household. So good point. Yeah. Uh, I know that you, so speaking about school and how, you know, you came through school and the, I guess what you think kids should be taught in school these days. Did you have a mentor growing up that really helped you? Cause obviously you went through that period where you were hanging out with, uh, you know, the wrong crowd, but did you have <coughs> people throughout your life who helped you get to where you are now? Yeah. I've had a lot of people help me. So, you know, <laughs> Just, just watching my dad, my dad had great work ethic. He died when I was 10. Um, but I just remember what I remember about my dad was he showed up every day to work. He never called in sick. Uh, he put his, he put his suit on and went out every day, came home at night. And his job was to, he treated success like it was a duty. And that's one of my, my little sayings that I've adopted in my life. Success is my duty. It's not, it's not an option. Uh, uh, it's my job to provide that for my wife, my kids, my community, my church and myself. So, uh, my mom, my mom was a, you know, a, a mentor of mine. She was, she was, uh, she, she taught me out of half, half the businesses I wanted to go into, including our real estate businesses worth $2.3 billion today. She, she told me not to do that. But, but in that way, she was a real mentor to me because she always told me, hey, invest in yourself, invest in yourself, just invest in yourself. Like she was an uneducated woman. She didn't finish. Uh, she didn't go to she didn't finish high school, actually. And uh, but she said, hey, if you invest in yourself, you'll never lose. Uh, and then there was a lot of people that I worked for along the way that I watched them quit, quit creating their businesses. They quit growing their companies. They built enough for them. And I watched everybody that was talented leave them. And, and I learned from watching that, uh, that, hey, if you want to keep great people, you got to keep building your business. Otherwise, they're going to leave. Yep. Mate, I should thank you. Um, I've been, obviously been watching the show. And one thing I've taken from it is you said, always show up. No matter if you're tired, you're sick, you're unwell, always show up. And I'm like, this year I've actually gone, okay. Listen to Grant. Always show up, no matter what. <laughs> Glad to show up this morning. <laughs> so, Marisha, yeah. thank you for that. And uh, my last question for you. What would you tell your 20-year-old self? I'd say, hey, quit using drugs. Oh, yeah, that's, pretty, that's a pretty good answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I'd say, hey, hey, little Grant, quit using drugs. Quit, quit spending time with deadbeats. Sp quit spending time with people that are, you know, creating criminal acts and breaking the law and wasting weekends. Weekends make you weak. Uh, had I not been doing that, I'd be <laughs> like, I'm using that. Before. That's I'm great. Steal that. Weekends make you weak. Uh, had, had, had I not been using drugs, it'd have been like, dude, quit hanging around pretenders. Quit hanging around guys that lie. Quit hanging around the girls that cheat. You know, like quit. Don't be around weakness because because if you're around weakness, you get weak and put your head down, pay the price right now. This would have been my last piece of advice. Pay the price right now so you can pay any price in the future. That's good. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Pay the price, Lisa. The price. <laughs> I've got no money. Uh, I think we, Lisa, I think you should do Undercover Billionaire in Melbourne. Oh, my God. I don't know. I feel like it'd be an interesting challenge. I think, oh, I wonder what the hardest thing would be. I think starting from nothing is actually probably a good thing because you're 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 gonna push yourself to hustle a lot more. Like you said, like cashing that check meant you had no money, so you had to start from nothing. And did, that, that's did, let me ask you guys: Did you guys notice that the two girls had really nice trucks and I had a piece of shit truck? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. There you go. No. Yeah. Well, you should go back and watch it. Yeah, Do well, you notice that they have nice clothes and I don't? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. <laughs> I'm like, God damn, where did their heels come from? I had one pair of boots, <laughs> two pairs of jeans, two t-shirts, and that's it. You never see me in other anything other than black jeans and a black t-shirt. Yeah. Well, look, women are wait organized. To, wait till you guys see how much money I put on the put on the board. <laughs>
<laughs> well, interestingly, I love that you already had your backstory sorted because Elaine was saying that she didn't even have a backstory. She's like, I just got my nails done. And then she was thinking, oh my God, I'm supposed to look like I've got no money, but I've got like fresh, like a fresh manicure. So I, I feel like you really immersed yourself in that character, which is... I'm guessing why you did really well. But uh, thank you so much for your time today. It's been incredible and we're really excited to see the rest of the show and see how much you thank, made. Th thank you guys. And and I'd love to have you guys, uh, invite you guys to our 10X Growth Conference. It's in mid-March. Oh, amazing. I know you can't probably can't travel in right now, but uh, we'll get you a link so you guys can uh, join us. I got a great list of people joining me on stage. We do the largest business conference in the world uh, spend about six million dollars a year on it. Got some super, super talented people, uh, multiple uh, billionaires, real billionaires, not fake billionaires, <laughs> and um, and some super, super highly successful talent on stage. Oh, that's amazing. amazing! Thank you so much for that. So, two questions. Firstly, can you send your jet to come and get us? <laughs> and secondly, can we have one of those ten X chairs that you're sitting on? <laughs> yes, yes, yes to both. Okay, yes to both. I'll send the jet. And I'll send the chair. Amazing, amazing. amazing mate. Appreciate then. it, mate. That was great. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, okay so guys, much, be great. Matt. Take care, mate. Thank you. Yeah.